What's up? What's up? We've got QXC here at the GSL. Look at him in his lovely blazer. You can see he's even wearing his bandana on cast because QXC <laughs> just does not take it off. At least that's what everyone seems to think. I've actually never taken this bandana off. Yeah. How's it like showering with a bandana on? It's messy. It does. It is does messy. Seem like. does, it ever wet, start to, does it ever start to smell kind of bad? No, that's why I shower with it. Oh, that so it's kind of like washing it. Washing? No, it is washing. <laughs> if you use soap, do you do you not shower? With, I, do you like I, shower with dirt? I yeah, I shower with dirt actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an awesome lineup of games here, but don't forget that QXC is here. Did you notice that it's QXC here with me? What's up? First game coming up is OGS The Win versus MVP Ta Tales. MVP Tales, yeah. right. And that is Zerg versus Protoss. We're starting on Zelnaga Caverns. Yeah, we are. Good map. Yeah. So how do you like being in Korea so far, QXC? Man, it's pretty fun. Korea, um, when I was outside of Korea, I was like, you know, you hear everyone, and they're like, Koreans are good. And I was like, they can't be that good. And then you <laughs> get here, and you're like, oh, oh no, actually they are. Like <laughs> They are really good. So we're going to take a look at today's matches. Obviously, we've got OGS The Win versus MVP Tails. First up, that's followed by Bon Bons versus Soccer. Poso San versus Sheth is later on. Obviously, Sheth, a member of our team, so we'll be rooting for him there, but we'll have an unbiased cast for you guys. MMA versus Puzzle. And then later on today, or actually those will be tomorrow, Hyperdub versus Happy, Yu-Gi-Oh versus Curious, Jinro versus Shiny Star. So Jinro, got to tune into that because if he loses, he'll be out of Kode, a very important match. And not only that, but we've got Slayer's Boxer tomorrow as well, playing against ASDF. So that should be really exciting as well. Oh. Yeah. All right, so I'm just so excited to cast with you, QXC. I've be just sick, been looking man. forward to it for so long. I've been in Korea for about two weeks. I don't know. Time has gone by really fast, but been living with Wolf. We uh, we go get food. We go to pizza school late at night with our umbrellas because <laughs> it's been raining. I don't know if you know, but there was like a monsoon in South Korea, so we go. You'd like look outside and you'd be like, oh, it's not, you know, it's nice out. We'll go, we'll go for a run. Like this isn't a big deal. Me and Carl will go for a run, and then we get a mile away and it just starts downpouring, and we're like, oh, this isn't so bad. We'll, we'll go a little bit farther, and then we get back and we're just drenched. Like monsoon season. Monsoon season is pretty intense. You know who else is intense though? It's OGS the win. He is coach and player of OGS. I love those little tool tips we get there at the bottom. Um, for all the players, so obviously for those of you guys who didn't know, he's the coach and is a, still a player of OGS. Just recently dropped down from Code S into Code A, so this is a very important match for him. Of course, if he loses, he's going to have to requalify if he chooses to. Obviously, he's got a coach role right now, so he may not even try to. And here's his opponent, Tails. I wonder if he actually got that name from Sonic. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog is sidekick Tails the Fox. It's a pretty cool game. He used to play a lot of creative and unpredictable playstyle. I don't actually know what that means, but I'm sure we will find out. I'm sure we will. Um, I've seen a few games of Tails. He played in that Clash of the Houses tournament, I believe, and I don't really remember exactly what happened, but I know that he played well. I, I didn't look at him and go, oh, this guy's pretty bad. <laughs> and if I don't look at a player and say that, then he's probably got some skill. And <laughs> let's let's be real here. Anyone playing in Code A, Code S is, is good. Um, but some of you are like... Um, Going through the, the qualification process is, is definitely not easy. It's it's a grueling process. You play a lot of good players there. Uh, and anybody entering into it now is... They've got something. Yeah, something it's approved, actually like the show. hardest tournament in the world. So there are our maps. The first map will be Zelnaga Caverns, followed by Terminus Re, and then Metalopolis, of course, the third set, if needed. Now, the Wind is a player who doesn't get to practice as much as some other players, obviously, because he's the coach, and he does a lot of management stuff for OGS as well. So we'll see, though, how he does here against Tails, a player who has, I think, a lot more time to practice, but maybe not as much experience as the Wind. You see Wind doing his little power stretch, power yawn, power handbrake, handbrake, cracking knuckles. Handbrake. Both players, yeah, handbrake. <laughs> Before each game, Wind just breaks one of his hands real quick. Gets the adrenaline players. going, and the game is starting. Here we go. Yeah, the countdown is starting, guys. We're going to jump into it here in just a second. The map, obviously, is Zelnaga Caverns. It's one of our Korean commentators. There are some of our foreign commentators. <laughs> Map's loading up here, so we'll be starting here in just a second. And we're going into Zelnaga Caverns. So as a Terran player, I'm not super familiar with this map, or with this map. I've played Zelnaga Caverns quite a bit. <laughs> um, with this matchup on this map, what... 
Obviously, it's got a big, it's got a wide natural, so it's a little harder to take the expansion. Um, but what are your thoughts? What well, are we most likely see we'll here? see us be lane expand from the wind. Um, Tails most likely will do some sort of sentry expand, maybe two gates, maybe off of three. He could forge fast expand. Don't really know if that's actually what he's going to do. But the game is loaded, and the drones are mining. <laughs> We're going to jump into it in a second. Here we go. All right. Up here at the top left, a member of the team OGS, not only a member, but a coach. A very strong Zerg. He is known as... OGS to win two. And there is OGS the win. Yeah, He's focusing. Is. You see his headset has just changed yellow. He's advancing to Super Saiyan level two. <laughs> and in the bottom left, our Protoss player. Double mining all the patches, sending out a probe. MVP, Tails! <laughs> <laughs> and then we see Tails going to Super Saiyan 3 with the green headset. It's funny because, uh, you know, I was wondering, did he get that ID from Sonic? And based on that little intro we saw with the, with the hand behind the, the rear and the spinning around, clearly I, that was imitating a tail spinning. It, I, I would be, I would think so, indeed. And you know what Tails has problems dealing with? What's that? When he's flying? What's that? Wind. Oh, that's very a true. A windy day will defeat Tails. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's a good just point. Saying. I like that. So right now, we do see a gas burst from the wind. So he's going to be doing a speed lane span, most likely. And Tails has not yet taken his second gas. So he'll be taking that pretty shortly. As soon as his gets, he's actually Chrono boosting out a Zealot rather this than making a Cyber Next. Pretty port. interesting. And Tails isn't choosing to expand. Uh, sometimes we see this in uh, actually PVT where the Protoss will opt out of scouting with the first probe in favor of sending their first Zealot out, uh, and they kind of use that to get the early information. It gives them a little better economy and allows them to do a little bit of pressure. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. Yeah. But of course, delays the warp gate tech though, and it delays initial sentry, so it's kind of a trade-off there. With well, something that Zelda out, I think is really interesting, you don't really see Frosts do this enough, because sometimes Zergs just get kind of greedy, they don't make that many Zerglings, sometimes you see them just make two, but the wind is going to make four. And one Zealot versus four Zerglings, if the Zerglings are micro correctly, he probably will lose that Zealot, but he's actually sending that Zealot in a very unusual direction around the top of the map. And I think the, the main thing here is he's trying to make sure that uh, the wind doesn't see that Zealot coming, and it's... As far as I can tell, I don't think he did. There's an Overlord on the left side of the map, but I don't think it actually saw the Zealot. So this this is actually looking a little bad for the wind initially here. Um, probably, now what Tails can do here is actually skirt around the hatchery. You can see, Tails can see the hatchery, but the hatchery can't see him. So he's actually going to run straight into the main and try and do some damage, probably to the drones. It's going to be down to the wind to micro this appropriately. You can see the Lings are at his base now. Um, and here we see Tails going for the drones. The wind taking a little bit off guard. Takes one drone out, takes a second drone out. This is actually looking really bad for the wind. Losing a lot of drones right now. Gets a third drone, might get that fourth drone. Gets the fourth drone here, loses a bunch of mining time, almost takes out a fifth. And, you know, you might be like, oh, well, QXC lost four drones. Like, four drones this early? That's like 25% of his mining. That's yeah, a that big deal. Actually, really huge. He lost so many drones. I love that move by Tails, it was kind of sneaky, he went around the backside, like you said, so that his opponent wouldn't see it, then was able to go in there and just put that pressure on, that's not very usual, so it also forced the wind to make a few more Zerglings, he didn't really know what was going on, now he's kind of figuring it out, so you're actually, he's like, you're actually just sending a little bit of pressure, you're actually just going to expand, it's not any sort of all-in, you're not pressuring me super hardcore. Yeah, and one of the, one of the great things about that move is, even if that Zealot dies and doesn't do a lot of damage, and here we see the wind, Coming in, just sneaking in, trying to get those wings on top of the sentries, and a very nice force field by Tails. Yeah, um, I think he's going to have to hands cancel this Nexus, though. He does cancel it. It's the problem with force fielding like that is you can't actually leave afterwards to defend that Nexus, so he did have to cancel it. And forcing this Nexus to cancel is huge, and it's really going to put Tails behind. It's pretty interesting. The wind um, just applying pressure here, not allowing Tails to really do what he wants to. Uh, maybe feeling a little pressured himself to make something happen after losing those drones early on. Um, but right now I would say... Oh, almost force fields all of those lings in. Yeah, would that have, was like, really sloppy. <laughs> force fields, there was like three force fields on top of themselves. Yeah, you can see the two force fields are actually overlapping at one point. Um, 
Would have really liked to see him catch all of those lings that would have allowed him to take the expansion without too much trouble. Yeah. Um, and here we see Tails. You can see his money, 550. This isn't a mistake by Tails. This isn't Tails macroing bad. This is Tails trying to take his expansion. He's constantly staying over 400 because he's trying to put the Nexus down. He's trying to make something happen. Um, and here we see the Nexus does go down. The Wind trying to do some damage here, but good force fields keep the Zerglings off the Nexus. Yeah, that was actually really scary. The Nexus got about down to about 120 hit points there. But like you said, with those force fields, he was able to push those Lings away. Back at home for the Wind, he has been droning out quite heavily, even making seven drones at this very moment. Has added a Roach Warren. He hasn't made any roaches just yet, but he's getting ready. Once he gets those drones up, he's going to start cranking out those roaches. And I would not be surprised to see some kind of uh, large timing attack from the wind coming up here. Um, mainly because using the pressure with the lings, Tails has used a lot of force fields so far. He's probably used six or seven, maybe eight force fields that he didn't really need to or want to. I mean, he needed to, but he didn't want to for sure. Um, and wind might see that as an opportunity for a big timing attack. He's going to be like, you know what, Tails doesn't have as many force fields as he should, and uh, roaches are going to be a little bit more effective there. That's true. I like this pile placement here next to the minerals and the geyser. It's very difficult for his lings to surround that. He is making a dark shrine here, so he may warp in some DTs to kind of bolster his army. He may even make Archons off of those, but with these spine crawlers here, there's a decent amount of roaches for the wind. Basically, this pressure move by Tails just forces the wind to make units that are not drones, but he's not going to actually attack. He shouldn't attack because it might end up failing pretty badly. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another reason, Tails, Tails knows he doesn't have as many force fields. He's going for DT tech. Very expensive. It doesn't make a lot of sense for him to really attack, but it does make sense for him to pressure. He moves out on the map. He makes the wind think he's doing some kind of big timey attack, uh, and he doesn't. He just sits there, makes the wind kind of wonder what's going on, keeps him on the defensive, and the wind might just forget to build detection. Exactly. This is, uh, we see this more and more in, uh, on the Korean server in PVT, where the Protoss will open something that doesn't look like, like DTs at all, and then DTs come. And here, the DTs are out, rolling into the wind's base. Yeah, he is gonna try to, they are spotted now, so he is gonna try to get ready for that. He does have Lair Tech, but he's not making any Overseers just yet. A lot of drones are going down here at the Natural, and they're about to fall in the main as well. He's just targeting down drones left and right. Now he's actually attacking some of the attacking units of the wind. A lot of times Protosses do this, attack the attacking units of the Zerg, and then do a timing attack once all the units are low on hit points. And still, no Overseer. He's finally making that Overseer, but it's just too far away from those DTs, and a nice little link counterattack here, but there aren't enough speed links. And good force fields here blocking those links away, but now the Roaches are on top of the army. And this, this is actually looking so bad for Tails and the Wind. I'm not really sure what's going to come out here. It looks like Tails' whole army is going to get squashed by these Roaches. But at the same time, the Wind doesn't have any drones mining at home. Uh, he's got drones at the natural, excuse me. But in the main, he's lost a lot of drones. Can we take a look at the uh, the relative production tabs? So. Tails has almost twice the number of drones, um, but the wind does have more of an army. Back home, Tails is prepared for the counterattack. He's got three cannons. It's going to be very hard for the wind to actually bust that. Um, but at the same time, wind really needs to catch up on drones. He needs to do something to put himself back in the game here. Yeah, he does. I mean, what's interesting also is he could have even done more with those DTs. After he, the drones all ran from the main, he killed a lot of those drones. He didn't kill the larva. For those of you guys who don't know, DTs one-shot larva and there were like eight larvae just sitting there. He could have attacked those, shut down the production of the wind, but instead he just had a DT kind of whacking away at the lair, didn't kill it, didn't really do that much damage to it. So he could have even done more with those DTs. But as it stands, he's going to continue making DTs. He's actually sending one into the natural right now. We'll get surrounded though and kill the pylon as well. We'll be spotted. One thing to note about, you were mentioning like he should have done more with the DTs. Part of what was keeping him from doing that was because wind was harassing his army. He had to pay attention to that army. He had to force field it. This is a pretty common tactic at higher levels of play. When your opponent needs to do something that's micro-intensive, you force them to focus on something else. You attack their army, you apply pressure, and you say, you know what, you can't micro your DTs. You micro your DTs, I'm going to kill your whole army because you're not going to have good force fields. Exactly. Now these stalkers are going to catch these roaches here at the pile. The pylon stays up. He does have burrow. burrow. Tails has blink. So this is a kind of interesting situation because there isn't a robotics facility up. Or actually, it just finished, so he's getting that first observer out right now. And with that blink control, he is going to be able to shut down any overseers that try to come with an army from the wind. So the wind is kind of in a tough spot, 
where he can't safely take a third base because otherwise DTs will just shut it down. If he tries to bring an Overseer, the Stalkers can blink on top of it. It's a very tough spot to be in. Definitely. It's it's also really hard. We may see just a big timing attack here. Tails has a huge number of units, and the wind, the wind is really just catching up on drones here. And a sick move by Tails. Very nice. Blinks into the main, force fields the ramp. This is going to buy him a good amount of time. Takes out the Hydralis then. Where did those warps three sentries in? This is fantastic. Here we see the Overseer just kind of chilling out. The Stalkers going to town. Sentries there. The wind trying to take out the pylon, but I don't think it's going to be done fast enough. He's got at least one more force field here, and the wind, the wind in bad, bad dire straits here. Yeah, he's looking like he's going to die. A spine crawler tries to come up here to help out. Can't even get up before being taken out. So many stalkers here inside of his base. The stalkers do have plus one. The wind has no upgrades for his units. He's losing his Roach Warren. He's going to lose this lair. And even if he does clean this up, which won't be easy to do, the sentries still have enough energy. When you have four sentries there, those four seals are just going to last a long time. And I got to say, QXC, I think the wind is, is going to lose from here. He has a pretty sizable army, but it's just not enough. And he can't kill. Tails' army because Tails has that high ground advantage. He has Blink. He can actually just leave from here. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But there are Speedlings waiting. Very nice move by the wind. Catches the Stalkers. Zergling's very good against Stalkers here. And after the Stalkers have used their Blink, they're trapped. They've got nowhere to go. Um, and here we see the small remnants of the wind coming at it from both sides, trying to get the Stalkers to Blink back down. And there, the Speedlings going for the surround, going to do quite a bit of damage here. Yeah, he is going to lose the majority of these Stalkers, if not all of them. And in fact, it looks like he will lose all of them, but even so, he's mounted up a pretty large, sizable Stalker force back at home. And the problem is the Wind has one mining base right now. He lost his lair, he lost his Hydral Ascend, he lost his Roach Warren. He doesn't have any upgrades for his units, and right now, Tails can safely take that third base. And that was a great move, warping those sentries on the high ground. It's actually something I've seen our player FXO Oz do a lot. He really likes to get that one Stalker up there, warp in sentries, and then blink everything up. Force field the units out, it's a great move. You can do it in almost every matchup. Yeah, one thing that's that's uh, a little interesting to note is, correct me if I'm wrong, Roaches can burrow under force fields. That's true. So he could have taken the, he did have burrow, we saw that done. I don't know if he had burrow movement. I'll check that right now. He does not have burrowed movement, so he okay. wasn't able to burrow under those. I'm sure he would have done that if he did have the opportunity. And again, you know, losing that Roach Warren, I think he was researching it, but he lost the Roach Warren, so it right. never finished. Right. He is um, remaking his spawning pool right now. He even lost that. So basically he has the ability to make nothing And there's a drones. Dark Templar attacking the uh, the drones there. We didn't even notice that. The Overseers all got picked off. I think he had more than one, but they all died to the um, to the Stalkers when they jumped into the main. Yeah, right now things are looking pretty bad for the wind. 61 probes to 22 drones. The army of the wind is effectively four changelings, four zerlings, and two hydralisks. <laughs> He's in rough shape. I don't see him coming back from this. I actually don't know what he could do to come back from this. I just don't think it's possible to recover when you're this far behind. Tails is playing very uh, very safe at this point. He knows he's ahead. He's just massaging his advantage. Um, <laughs> massaging his advantage, I like that. Arguably, it's a, a little unnecessary, but you know, as as the, the caster, the observer, you see the whole game state. You take everything in, you're, you look at the wins base, and you're like, oh, he's at 54 supply. Tails is at 127. Why doesn't Tails just win? But Tails doesn't know exactly how far ahead he is. And I think at this point, the observers are out. He's realizing that, yes, I can just go win this game, and that's what he's about to do. He's going to put the hammer down. He's going to show everyone that Tails in wind is still powerful. Yeah, sometimes the wind blows you higher, makes you go faster. <laughs> and these stalkers are just going to crush base at this point. There is no army whatsoever for the wind, and he's got Blink. He's got better upgrades, he's got plus two. The wind still with no upgrades is just going to be taken out here. Nothing to say about it, we're going to go into game two. GG. There's the GG. Um, so the second map, I believe, is Terminus. Is that, I will check that. It is, yep, Terminus. It is Terminus. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Terminus, very easy map to take a third base on. We'll see a... We'll see the map soon, and there's the wind. I just wanna make um, not feeling so good about Yeah, he looks a little bit stressed out about losing that game. A lot of it came down to that first zealot. I can't stress enough how important that zealot was. It threw the wind off balance. He wasn't really sure what to do next, so he kind of 
had those uh, those drones, a few of them died. He tried to micro them a little bit, and uh, after that, things got a little weird. He did make a ton of Zerglings after that that cut down on his drones, but he used them properly, made the Nexus cancel. He tried to slow down that Nexus, but that one blink in was huge. The Dark Templar, they did a lot of damage as well, so there were just a lot of mistakes that the wind made. He just didn't deal with Tails' style very well. I mean... It's one of those things, like, the Zell is a situation where, like, everything's going fine, I'm scouting, my lings are moving out, there's a Zealot at my base. Or, I'm macroing, everything's going fine, I got him to cancel his Nexus, I delayed it a whole bunch, I'm doing great, there's two Dark Templar at my base. It was moments like that that really threw him off and allowed the, the Blink Stalker to be so effective. Um, exactly. Well, the countdown has started, and we have begun... I think the wind will be on the lookout for DTs here. Uh, no matter what your opponent does, man, I've seen DTs come out of everything. Two gate robo, one gate expand, three gate expand. Straight into DTs, DT expand. DT expand into <laughs> more DTs, man. They just, you never know. You, you never just, know. You just got to know the timings. You're like, at eight minutes, DTs can come. DTs come, DTs. DTs come, DTs go. You can't explain it, man. It's <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to get into the game now.